Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Using this skull, to which we have added arteries and nerves, we will review the anatomy of the nasomaxillary complex. The region is supplied basically by three major arteries, the maxillary artery, the ophthalmic artery, the facial artery. There are two nerves, the maxillary nerve and branches of the ophthalmic area, ophthalmic nerve, that supply the region as well. Let's look first at the maxillary artery. The maxillary artery is one of the terminal branches of the external carotid system. It passes deep behind the neck of the condyle and traverses this infratemporal region. And here it, you can see it cut off the artery has a bit of a redundancy here. It passes through the pterygomaxillary maxillary fissure at this point and passes into the pterygopalatine fossa. The maxillary nerve, on the other hand, we can see here in the middle cranial fossa, is exiting foramen rotundum, and it too will enter the pterygopalatine fossa. From this fossa, then, the branches of the maxillary nerve and artery will distribute to the mid face. Let's look at them in sequence from a lateral most branches through the intermediate to the most medial branches. Here we can see the most lateral branches coming off of the maxillary artery at this point are the posterior superior alveolar arteries passing into this infratemporal surface of the maxilla. They are frequently accompanied by nerves, which are shown here, the posterior superior alveolar nerve, which is also going to pass into this portion of the maxilla. In the middle region of the face, we can look into the orbit and locate here on the floor of the orbit the maxillary nerve's terminal branch, the infraorbital nerve, and accompanying it then, the infraorbital artery. This nerve traverses the floor of the orbit within the infraorbital groove, disappears in bone, the infraorbital canal, and appears on the face as a spray of nerves at this point. Most of these nerves are supplying soft tissue overlying the region, and one can find a small branch of the infraorbital artery here as well. There are two branches which arise in bone and travel in bone their paths I have noted by these dashed lined nerves in these two positions. These are the anterior superior alveolar nerve, which travels in this direction, and in addition to supplying the teeth, will supply the piriform recess at this point. It then continues to reinforce an area of the superior dental plexus at this point. The middle superior alveolar nerve, located here, can pass to this middle portion of the superior dental plexus by one of two routes. One marked here, passing along this anterior aspect of the zygomatic strut of the maxilla, or it can approach from the posterior aspect in this fashion. These three nerves, the anterior, middle and posterior superior alveolar nerves are going to then reinforce a superior dental plexus, a plexus of nerves lying above the apices of the maxillary teeth in this region. After considering these vessels of the mid face, we would like to look at the most medial aspect next. Here, we will be considering those which lie within the nasal cavity. In order to see them, 
we need to remove a portion of the bony septum. The cartilaginous septum, which extended in this region, is of course missing. But here we can see the vertical plate of the ethmoid, the vomer bone, and if these two are removed and set aside, we can see then the lateral aspect of the nasal cavity. Here we can see one of the major branches of the maxillary artery passing through the sphenopalatine foramen at this point. We have the posterior lateral nasal branches of that artery. We can see them supplying the middle conch, the inferior conch, and the inferior meatus. Accompanying these branches, we have a series of nerves. Those which issue from the sphenopalatine foramen themselves are referred to as the posterior superior lateral nasal nerves, and we can see them here supplying the sphenoethmoidal and superior conch region and the middle conch as well. Passing inferiorly from the sphenopalatine foramen within a bony canal is another path for the nerve supply in this region. Penetrating from that canal is a nerve, the posterior inferior lateral nasal, which is going to be shown here, supplying the inferior conch. In addition to these branches of arteries and nerves that we've shown on the lateral aspect, you should keep in mind that branches, for example, here will pass to the septum and then pass along it as they distribute. For example, here we can see a branch of the sphenopalatine artery, the septal branch, passing downward into the incisive canal and appearing here at the incisive fossa. In addition, and accompanying it then, we have the nasopalatine nerve, which passes in this direction and also to the incisive fossa. The canal we talked about is passing downward and reappears then in the hard palate where it issues the greater palatine nerve and greater palatine arteries, which are shown here, the lesser palatine nerves and the lesser palatine artery. You will notice that the artery will continue on to the incisive area where it can have an estomatic relationships with the sphenopalatine artery from above and we can see the terminal branches then of the nasopalatine nerve supplying this portion of the palate. Now I would like to look at two other arteries and one other nerve that supply this region. Let's now look in the orbit. Here we can see the ophthalmic artery passing into the orbit in this region. It supplies many other structures in here but I have put in one branch, the anterior ethmoidal artery, which will pass into this medial aspect at this point, and the posterior ethmoidal, which would approach that from this region. Here, in the nasal cavity, we can see those branches. Here is the posterior uh, ethmoidal artery as it passes into the sphenoethmoidal recess. Here is the anterior ethmoidal artery as it passes into this region to supply the uh, lateral nasal wall superiorly and then continue on to the face. You will notice that the nerve only accompanies the anterior ethmoidal artery. And here is the anterior ethmoidal nerve supplying this superior lateral aspect of the nasal cavity and continuing on the face as the external nasal nerve. One spray of nerves, which we've left out for clarity, is found in this region, and that, of course, is the, the olfactory nerve spray, which would have entirely covered this region. Finally, there is one other artery that will supply this region, and that can be seen here. The facial artery passes onto the face and into the mid-face region, at the level of the bicuspid. It then will send a branch, the superior labial, which will anastomose with the opposite side. And from that superior labial artery, 
there can be a number of small branches which will supply then this pure portion of the piriform recess. And that completes our review of the arterial and nerve supply to the mid-face. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.